أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله نعيد تعلم وتعليم ونفع والانتفاع وتذكر وتذكير والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام ودعوت إلى الهدى والدلالة إلى الخير ابتغاء وجه الله وقربه وثوابه أما بعد الحمد لله رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل نقلة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم الحمد لله All praise be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى صلى الله عليه وسلم upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله it is with the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are gathered here today again to share about rulings or advice relating to marriage that each and every one of us needs to be reminded about every now and then. One may ask, uh, why do we need advice about marriage? One of the main reasons is that the high rate of divorce among our community where uh, a year estimated four to five thousand marriages are registered and almost two thousand divorces are registered every year so this is a problem that uh, each and every one of us should try our best to have a positive uh, influence in our own circles so that we may help anyone who may need advice relating to marriage. Uh, we have shared earlier the past few weeks regarding conflicts that happen in a marriage that cannot be avoided. Conflict can happen between couples and the reasons are not necessarily from the spouse, him or herself, that causes conflict, but it can be uh, it, the, the source of the conflict may be people within the family itself, not the partner, not the wife, not the husband, but the in-laws or the family members or the close friends. It is surprising that when we look and observe their actions, it is as if they cannot let go and it is as if they are the ones themselves who want the marriage to fail. So we have shared uh, the past few weeks regarding what are the steps that we should take, how do we address the issues that arise. Of course, uh, it's not all nice and sweet and the honeymoon period for a new couple after maybe months or maybe after a year or after a few years, uh, relationship becomes more challenging, life becomes more challenging, so that can take an effect on the couple. If they are not aware of these things, it will affect them negatively, and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect our unions, our marriage, because it is something which is deeply related with our practice of religion and practice of our own spirituality. In Islam, marriage is very much intertwined with our practice of Islam. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that abghad al-halal ila Allah al-talaq, the most despised of all halal acts, which means there is no halal act that is not uh, there is no halal ex that is despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the only one that is despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abghadul Halal. And Allah is most uh, not favorable of the halal act, which is the talaq, the divorce. It is a solution. It can be a solution, but it is disliked by Allah subhanahu so it is related with the uh, with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also uh, shaitan, it is mentioned in a hadith that one of the main 
uh, we can see uh, a KPI of the shaitan. One of the main KPIs of the shaitan in a scenario that is, is related where the shaitan comes to the iblis or to their leader and reports their actions. So one of them says, I have done this and this, and I have done this and this, and I have done this and this. This one, according in the, the view of the shaitan, are meritorious things. But the ones, the one act which is more meritorious uh, in the aspect of the shaitan and the actions, the evil actions, is breaking up the marriage of a Muslim couple. So it is very much related with the pleasure of Allah and the pleasure of shaitan and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a strong marriage repels uh, shaitan and the influences of shaitan in, on ourselves, on our family, and also on our community. So each and every one of a family member plays an important role in the longevity or in the uh, preservation of any marriage especially their close friend or especially their family member the there, there has to be a distinction between an assisting role and becoming too close to the point where the family member breaks up the marriage there is a distinction that has to be made there is a family member that is close to the family and then he can give proper advice because not everyone with a good intention can impart good advice there are people in the family or friends they have good intentions they have nothing but good intentions but because of their lack of experience or because of their ignorance maybe they impart bad advice so we have to be careful also in facing conflicts who do we turn to who do we ask who do we ask advice from for example if a lady she has problems with her husband and then she confides in a friend and her friend was someone who has a history of divorce and abuse by her husband then of course the advice that she is going to receive will not really be may not be helpful uh, or someone who has uh, bad experience with the opposite sex and has a vendetta against men on the whole. So uh, be careful who we ask marriage advice to. Even someone uh, who is learned in religion does not even necessarily also mean that he can impart good advice relating to relationship issues. Uh, it is best to refer. Who do we go to? To a level-headed relative who is mature, who has experience, and is not too fast in judging if there you are going to refer to a relative. Another good place to refer to or seek advice is to go to a marriage counsellor. There is no shame in going to see a marriage counsellor because in any issues that you have, if there is problems, you go and fix it, and you go find someone who can fix it. If you do not have the skills or the tools to fix it, you may cause more problems instead of repairing the item. Your car is spoiled. You go to a mechanic, you don't go to a relative, even with good intentions, or if he has all the tools, even if he is a, a graduate from uh, any school of uh, relating to uh, repairing, of things, but he does not have experience in that field. It does not qualify him uh, to do the repair. So there is no shame in asking help in uh, problems that we face in a marriage. With whoever we have problems or conflict with, it is always best to seek advice and proper advice and a proper channel and a proper place to seek advice. One of the worst place to seek advice is on social media. There are people who have problems with his wife and then he vents his anger on Facebook or on uh, Instagram or on Twitter. And then the people that comments, that gives comments, we have to realize that the comment that you give can have an effect on the person reading, can influence his decision. So there is, anyone can give a comment, not qualified, people who are emotional, and that can 
give actually more problems instead of uh, giving a solution to the problem. Okay, so uh, we have mentioned a lot about conflicts and negative aspects about about marriage, things that should be repaired, things that should be fixed. So uh, this week and inshallah in the coming weeks, uh, we will share one important aspect about uh, marriage or achieving happiness and bliss in a marriage is the issue of marital intimacy or to be blunt, uh, the issue of sexual relations that sometimes uh, we don't be surprised that there are people there are people in this world who still do not know how to uh, have good sexual relations with his or her spouse. So, these things actually, the guidance is in the practice of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is advice in Islam relating to, 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 to marital intimacy. It's not just uh, the responsibility of a husband and wife is to do this and to do this and to do this, but it is the, the advice is more complete by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not only rulings, it's not only, oh, teach your children uh, how to recite the Quran or teach them how to do salat and do this and do certain things and to provide nafkah for the family and to make sure that the lives uh, that you lead are in accordance with the teachings of Islam. But it is also, and there is also an emphasis in Islam to observe a healthy relationship and good intimacy with your partner. So these things are also actually discussed in Islam and the Sahabat also learns some of the guidelines from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the objective is that uh, we just want to know what are the things that I mentioned and the guidance in Islam relating to marital intimacy. And we are talking about sexual relations between husband and wife. Forgive the language because these things are uh, sometimes it has to be made clear. So the, the, the choice of words uh, also can be uh, uncomfortable for us to mention, but we have to. Okay, so uh, in Islam, everything is for a higher purpose. Even sexual relations, it is not an objective. For people who do not have religion, Sexual relations or sexual gratification is an objective. But for us, people who have religion and Islam, it is not an objective in itself or the final objective. It is an objective leading to a higher objective. So the marriage leads to that, sexual gratification, and sexual gratification leads us to become better Muslims, how we will explain further. And so among the primary object, ob objectives uh, of marriage is to have sexual relations. And there is a role that this relation or intimacy plays in our religion and also in a spirituality where for a man, usually it is man that is known to be more promiscuous or man is known to have a higher level of desire, usually, not all the time, but usually. So, Islam or marriage or the, legi the leg legitimacy of marriage plays a role for him to have an outlet for his desires that he cannot avoid from having. So, for one who does not have this outlet of sexual gratification, it can affect his religion it can affect his ibadah, it can affect his lifestyle. It can affect his lifestyle. One, because when one does not have this outlet uh, to have sexual gratification, that can lead someone to become promiscuous. When he does not have this healthy intimacy with his wife, this can also be one of the causes of uh, promiscuity or people having extramarital relations. So in this aspect, Sexual relation plays an important part in us directly becoming 
better Muslims in one aspect. And also in our spirituality, when one has an outlet for his desire and a legal and legitimate outlet for this desire that is in need in himself, then uh, once it is met, then one's spirituality becomes stronger. So because when, when one do not have this desire, when this desire is not fulfilled, it affects his spirituality. It makes him difficult to focus on his spirituality. He will focus more on his desires and his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be affected. So this is one of the ways, uh, like uh, saying that, to put everything out of the way and then uh, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this thing is still in the way, so that can be a problem for one's spirituality, not only for men, but also for, for wives. And of course, uh, we know the role of uh, the relations or intimacy in our society is to safeguard the boundaries of coexistence. So when one has rules, is uh, everyone has desires. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala creates men like that. Zuina li nas wa bushahwati min al nisa wal bani al qanatir al muqantarati min al zahabi wal fidati wal khaili al musawamati wal an ami wal harf. Zuina li nas wa bushahwat min al nisa. It has been made desirable, bushahwat, to have uh, desire for someone who has desire in a woman. So we are created that way. So the rules of marriage plays an important role in safeguarding morality and safeguarding the rules in a society, in living together, coexistence. For example, Islam emphasizes the, the, uh, the, the sin of zina, of being promiscuous towards uh, one of the biggest sins. Zina is in itself one, one of the big sins, one of the major sins in Islam. But the major sin can be even bigger when one has sexual relations with the wife or the partner or the family member of his neighbor. Because a neighbor, a neighborhood should be a strong and healthy relationship between families and they become a strong unit and they become uh, a place that is conducive for someone to practice their religion. So when one becomes promiscuous, when he does not take care of his relations with his neighbors and he is promiscuous to his neighbor's wife, that major sin becomes a major, major sin. So uh, as you can see that marriage is very important, uh, plays an important role in uh, channeling that desire not only for the benefit of our spirituality but the relationships in our society and the boundaries in a society for one uh, to have peace and living and coexisting with each other in a healthy way. And this is one of the objectives of religion. Makasit Sharia is to protect the sanctity uh, of a person provide uh, to, to, to preserve all those things. Okay? And so, for example, there is a, a question relating to this matter. So what is the best age for someone to get married? We have teenagers at the age of 18 who wants to get married. They already have that desire and that desire have to be kept in check and marriage can, can keep that uh, channel, that desire in a healthy manner. There are people who get married at the age of 21 or 23 or 25. The average age that we see people getting married today, I think is around, uh, for men is around 28, for women is around 25. That is uh, largely uh, the average age. I'm not referring to statistics, just anecdotal evidence. So, for someone who wants to get married at 21, 
or 18. And he cites all these reasons that he wants to get married. Is it a legitimate claim or is it a legitimate uh, need for one to get married at such a young, a young age? So when we look at it from the perspective of religion, this is the objective of a marriage, is to control and check that desire. But, of course, there are more factors than that. We look at the long-term uh, effects that any decision can have on the future of a person. So, can someone age 18 get married and live a happy lifestyle? We cannot say for sure whether yes or no. Because whatever happens is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can be, uh, that reason can be true and they probably can live a happy uh, life forever after. Or someone who gets married simply because of that desire, it can be a negative thing for him and his future, for someone who is immature. So that's why we see a lot of marriages of young couples, when I say young, which is younger than 21. And this is uh, the level of maturity nowadays because I think uh, our fathers and probably your time, uh, people got married at 16 and 18 and there was no problems. But the situation today, the wada is that when one gets married at 18 or even 19, then we become suspicious. What are the reasons? But it happens that young couples who get married, uh, a lot of times it is because they have already gotten pregnant. So this is definitely not a reason why one should get married. Uh, one should get married because of his desires, yes. But one wants to get married or if our children wants to get married, na'udhu billah, uh, because they have gotten pregnant, then that is not a factor for one to go into marriage at a young age. Because it is too late already. Once, he, uh, once a lady gets pregnant outside of marriage, whatever she does to cover uh, the scene of from people wanting to find out, Marriage is not necessarily the best solution. So, uh, these are, I'm just mentioning some of the things relating to uh, the desire and also the decision uh, for one to get married. And as we have said that uh, marriage and it is closely related to sexual relations and these are some of the things that we just have to take note of. And it has a role in becoming better Muslims and making us uh, more spiritual, yes. But we have to observe it in a, in a proper manner. So inshallah, next week we will share relating to rulings about, uh, relation, about sexual relations in marriage. They can be wajib, they can be sunnah, it can be makro, and some other questions and answers, inshallah, if you have. We will share further next week. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وأستغفر الله من قول بالعمل سبحانك الله ما بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.